say to you, you're not leaving. Oh, I just want to be in the room, want to be in the room when you move. And I'm not leaving, not leaving till you do. I just want to be in the room, want to be in the room when you, you move. Jesus. And I'm not leaving, not leaving till you do. Oh, I just want to be in the room, want to be in the room when you move. And I'm not leaving, not leaving till you do. To tear off the roof, lowering me down Whatever it takes Whatever to get takes. me to you So tear off the roof and lower me down Whatever it takes to get me to you Oh Jesus, wanna be in your presence, Lord Tear, tear off, off the roof, roof lower me down, down. Whatever, whatever it takes to get me to you. Roll every stone, push through the crowd. God, I want to break through, want to see you break through. Tear off the roof, lower me down. Whatever it takes to get me to you. Roll every stone, push through the crowd. God, I want to see you break through. And I just want to be in the Wanna be in the room when you move And I'm not leaving, not leaving till you do Oh, I just wanna be in the room, wanna be in the room when you move And I'm not leaving, not leaving till you do I just want to be in the room, want to be in the room when you move. And I'm not leaving, not leaving till you do. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Oh, we praise your holy name, Jesus. Oh, we praise your holy name. It's better felt than told, I can just tell you. Oh, his spirit, when it comes upon you, oh, you can't describe it. Oh, it's just something that you have to grab a hold of. He says to taste and see that the Lord is good. Oh, just taste and see. Oh, 
oh, that his presence, oh, can give you what you need.
senses are all familiar, but no one soul or people. If you have your Bibles, turn to Judges, Judges chapter 16, amen. Um, Going to be preaching on a love story that went sour. That ain't the title of the message, amen. Man, Samson, to be so strong, he was weak, wasn't he? He had all kinds of trouble with women, amen. I'm not a male chauvinist to put women down at all. I'm just telling you, this guy had some trouble, amen. And, uh, but anyway, let's re- I- I'm going to read a lot of verses and then we're going to talk a little while. In Judges chapter 16, beginning at verse 4, I want to read down through verse 22. Um, I go- gave those guys verse 21, but I'm going to add one for good measure. The Bible says, And it came to pass afterward that he loved a woman in the valley of Zorak whose name was Delilah. And the lords of the Philistines came upon her and said unto her, Entice him, Samson, of course, and see wherein his great strength lieth, and they, and by what means we may prevail against him. Man, he'd just whip, whip them every time. They'd come out against him, 30 men. They'd be all kinds of people come, amen, and they'd just... Um, they, they, they'd be defeated, that, that we may bind him and afflict him, and we will give thee, every one of us, 1,100 pieces of silver. So she's getting ready to sell him out for money. And Delilah said to Samson, Tell me, I pray thee, wherein the great strength lieth, and wherein thou mightest be bound to afflict thee. Tell me, you know, Samson, in my opinion, didn't look no different than we do. He just had the power of God would come upon him, and he could do things that ordinary men couldn't do. And the same is true today. You can't fake it, and you can't make it. Amen. You either got it or you don't, and that's just the truth. And Samson said unto her, If thou bind me with seven green whisks that were never dried, then shall I be weak and be as other men. I'll be just, everybody recognized that Samson was different. And then the lords of the Philistines brought up to her uh, seven green whisks, uh, and, and which had not been dried, and they bound him with them. And now there was men lying in wait, abi- uh, uh, abiding with her in the chamber. And she said unto him, The Philistines be upon thee, Samson. And he break the whips as a thread of toll is broken when it 
toucheth the fire. So his strength was not known. And Delilah said unto Samson, Behold, thou hast mocked me, tell me, and told me lies. Now tell me, I pray thee, wherein thou mightest be bound. Uh, man, I'd have caught on to this after a while. She set me up, amen. And, and the Bible says, uh, and he said unto her, if they bind me fast with new ropes uh, which were never occupied, then I shall be weak and be as other men. Delilah therefore took new ropes and bound him therewith and said unto him, the Philistines be upon thee, Samson. And, and there were liars in wait abiding in the chamber, and he break them off his arms like a thread. And Delilah said unto Samson, Hitherto thou hast mocked me, and told me lies. Well, ma'am, what does she think she's doing to him? And the Bible says, Tell me wherewith thou mightest be bound. And he said unto her, If thou weavest the seven locks of my head with, with a web, and she fastened it with a pen, and said unto him, The Philistines be upon thee, Samson. And he awaked out of his sleep and went away uh, with the pen of the beam uh, with, uh, uh, and the web. And it says, And she said unto him, How canst thou say I love thee when thou, thine heart is not with me. Hers wasn't with him either. She's getting ready to sell him down the river for money. And the Bible says, Thou hast mocked me these three times. Thou hast told me where thou hast not told me wherein thy great strength lies. And it came to pass, amen, that she pressed upon him daily, uh, 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 pressed him daily with words, with her words, and urged him so that his soul was uh, vexed unto death. Man, she's going to worry me to death if I don't tell her the truth. I'd have been getting out of Dodge. I'm going to just tell you. Hey, Amen. I'd have called uh, 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 DodHarmony.com or whatever it is. Uh, uh, eHarmony.com. I'd have been looking for somebody else. I'm going to just tell you. Amen. I ain't the sharpest tool in the box, but I ain't stupid either. Amen. The Bible says uh, that, that, she t uh, that, that he told her all of his heart and said unto her, There hath not come a razor upon mine head, for I have been... And as right unto God from my mother's womb, if I be shaven, then my strength will go from me, and I shall become weak and be like other men. And, and when Delilah saw that he had told her all of his heart, she sent and called uh, the lords of the Philistines, saying, Come up this uh, at once, this once, for he has showed me uh, all of his heart. Then the lords of the Philistines came up unto her and brought money in their hand and she made him sleep upon her knees and she called for men and, and, and she caused him to be to, they caused him to be shaved of the seven locks of his head and, and she began to afflict him and his strength went from him and she said the Philistines be upon thee Samson and he awoke out of his sleep and he said I'm going to go out as at other times and I'm going to shave myself and he wist not he knew not that the Lord had departed from him but the Philistines took him and put out of his put out his eyes blinded him and brought him down he they brought him down to Gaza and bound him with fetters of brass and he did grind in the prison house how be it the hair of his head a man begin to grow after he was shaven. Father, bless the reading of the word. Uh, help us to help this church for the next few minutes. And Almighty God, uh, we pray, Lord, that you will give us understanding here today. And let us use these scriptures and make them applicable to our lives so that we can do better and live better and be stronger in the power of God and in His might. And we'll never fail to give you the praise, the honor, and the glory for it all. And we ask it in Jesus' name. Let the church shout amen. While you're being seated all of the building, we're going to talk the next few minutes. Uh, amen. On the title, Praise God Forever, is when you realize uh, that you, the one you thought the most of, uh, thinks nothing of you. This is exactly what happened to Samson. Uh, if you notice in the reading of our scripture, the Bible said that he went down to Zorik and he loved a woman there named Delilah. But the truth of the matter is Delilah didn't love him. Uh, amen. So uh, if you look at the life of Samson, you're going to find that he had three 
three women uh, that the Bible tells us about. Uh, amen. And all they done was brought him heartache, betrayal, and deception. And I'm not here saying, uh, amen, that everybody's like that. The fact of the matter is, uh, the Bible says in Proverbs 18 and verse 22, uh, amen, whoso findeth a wife, uh, findeth a good thing and obtaineth favor with the Lord. Uh, but the truth of the matter is, all women ain't wives uh, and all men ain't husbands. Amen. Uh, but if you get one, you've got something great this side of heaven. Uh, but you know, the Bible tells us in Judges 14 uh, and verse 1 that Samson, uh, he went down to Timna, Timna and there he saw a woman uh, in Timna of the daughters of Philistine. Uh, verse 3 says that Samson went back to his daddy. And the Bible said that Samson said unto his father, get her for me, for she pleases me well. He said, I just can't be happy if I can't get that gal. Well, the Bible tells us, uh, amen, in the voice translation in verse 3 of Judges 14, uh, it, it, it says, you, he said to his father, you've got to get her for me. Uh, she's the one, amen. Uh, well, I'm going to tell you, church, she ain't the one, thank God. Uh, Samson, like many today, found out too late uh, that she really wasn't the one. Uh, when he gave the Philistines, which were the enemies of God, a riddle uh, and give them seven days to answer it. Uh, and he said, if you get the riddle, then I'm going to have to pay you 30 garments of clothes, uh, 30 changes of clothes. Uh, amen. So they come to Samson's wife uh, and, and they begin to beride her and threaten her. Amen. And finally they got the riddle out of her. Amen. So the one that Samson said is the one. Uh, amen. She actually betrayed him and gave the answer to Samson's riddle and it costed 30 men their lives and their garments. Amen. Uh, so in Judges chapter 14 and verse 18, uh, you're going to find that the, that, that, that the one that he thought was the one, uh, he don't call her the one no more, but he calls her something that I ain't never call my wife, and I'd probably get a, amen, a rolling pin up the side of the head if I did, but the Bible says uh, in Judges 14 and verse 18, uh, he said to these guys that found the riddle out, if you had not plowed with my heifer, amen, uh, he called his wife a heifer, amen, I ain't never done that. I'm smarter than that church. I just told you. Amen. I've called her sweet pea and sweetheart and all that stuff, but never a heifer. But I'm going to tell you, Samson told him, uh, he said, if you hadn't applied with my heifer, you had not found out the riddle. Now the Bible doesn't say uh, that he loved the woman that he married at Timna. And then the second woman that we find in the life of Samson, uh, he encountered a harlot uh, at Gaza. And it doesn't say that he loved the harlot. Uh, but the truth of the matter is, uh, the third woman that he had an encounter with, uh, the one that we read about today uh, in Judges 16 and 4 it says and it came to pass afterward uh, after the woman at Timba, after the harlot at Gaza that he loved a woman in the valley of Zorik uh, whose name was Delilah and I say good God of heaven uh, help us to learn from these, this tragic story of God's strong man amen uh, I want to tell you something church uh, amen you can be strong and still be weak uh, amen you may be the strongest person in this building uh, you you may be the most intelligent person in this building. Uh, you may be the wealthiest person in this building, uh, building but I want to tell you physical strength, amen, intellectual intelligence uh, and money can't get you out of the clutches of the devil. But I'm here to tell you greater is he that is in you uh, than he that is in the world. Uh, and I'm glad to preach to you today uh, that the greater one is in our midst. Hallelujah. He's greater than the devil. He's greater than the angels. Uh, He's greater than military might. He's greater than the potentates and the kings of this world. He's the greatest, amen. And his name is Jesus. Hallelujah, amen. So the, this champion by the name of Samson who was a judge of Israel, who was a, the strong man of God, amen, he finally fell victim to, his, uh, to this treacherous woman, amen. Uh, praise God and her entreaties. She said, you've deceived me these three times. You don't really love me. Amen. I'd have probably said, why, you ugly thing, you don't love me. Because if you love me, you wouldn't be wanting people to get what I've got. Amen. So that they can destroy my life. Amen. Listen, Samson, like many today, who follow and played with sin, amen, and, and, and um, transgress the laws of God, done it one time too many. Listen, the Bible means this when it says it. 
In Romans 6 and verse 23, it says, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. I'm going to tell you, payday someday. But I want the gift, amen. I ain't worried about the paycheck of sin. I want the gift of God that is eternal life. uh, And it only comes through Jesus Christ. Uh, So Delilah, once she knew the heart uh, of Samson, uh, she rocked him to sleep, uh, sung him a lullaby in her lap, uh, and had men come upon him as he slept slept, uh, and shave away the covenant that he had with God. And the Bible says in Judges 16 and 19, and she made him sleep upon her knees. Amen. Hallelujah. I don't know how she done it. I I really don't, praise God, because uh, you know the Nazarite vow is you ain't supposed to touch dead things. Uh, But Samson already broke that. Uh, Remember when he found the honeycomb in the the lion uh, and the lion was dead and and he went and touched that and he wasn't supposed to do that. Uh, Amen. And and the Nazarite uh, vow also was that you wasn't supposed to drink strong drink or wine. Uh, But you know, there's the the, the city of Zorak. Uh, It means intoxicating wine. Uh, I don't know. Maybe she uh, she said, sweetheart, just uh, let's have a little slip of wine here. Uh, Amen, listen, uh, but whatever it was, the Bible said that she made him uh, to sleep upon her lap, uh, upon her knees, and then when he got sound asleep, she called a man, uh, and she caused him to shave off the locks of his head, uh, and he, he, he and she began to afflict him, uh, and his strength went from him. Uh, he lost the presence of God and didn't even know it. Uh, amen, that's why the Bible tells us uh, to make our calling and our election sure with God, amen. Man, if there's anything you need to be sure about, uh, it's your calling of God and that you're fulfilling it. Uh, and the Bible says, uh, amen, that, that, that Samson uh, was betrayed. Amen. By the woman that he loved. He he was betrayed by her. How many has realized only too late like Samson, the one that they cared the most for, cared absolutely nothing about them. And most likely the last thing that Samson ever seen with his eyes was the woman that betrayed him. And after she gave him a buzz cut at Delilah's barber shop, amen, she said in verse 20, amen, she said, the Philistines be upon thee, Samson. And he awaked out of sleep. And he said, listen, buddy, I want to tell you something. You can say anything you want to say, but, 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 but if God says different, you ain't going to do nothing. Amen. And he said, I'm going to go out as at other times before. Yeah, he went out just like he used to go out, but that the one that went out with him all those other times before and give him victory, he wasn't there anymore. And he said, I'm going to go out as at other times before. I'm going to shake myself. Amen. And he wist not, he knew not that the Lord Lord was departed from him. Amen. Listen, uh, he was on his own. That's one of the most scary things. I'm going to tell you the truth about it. My mom died when I was 23. My dad passed away five years later when I was 28. And I ain't ashamed to say this, buddy. Amen. And this is just uh, something that children does every now and then. Uh, you know, a lot of times I'd, I'd get short and I'd have to borrow money from Dad. That's the truth, amen. It, it's tough sometimes getting started off. Uh, I mean, I'm gonna tell you something. I wished it was like the Jews had it. Amen, when you got married, you didn't have to go to war, didn't have to work. You had a full year, amen, to please your wife. Amen, just had a year of honeymoon, but they got it figured out. I'm gonna tell you in America what you do. Listen, guys, when you marry a wife, you go to work. You better go to work before you marry her, amen. Uh, Because uh, there ain't nobody going to give you a free ride for right here. But here's what I want to tell you. Sometimes I get short and I always knew that dad was there. Amen. I had a source to get, uh, you know, to get a little help along the way when I needed it. And then dad died. And buddy, that broke my heart. I'm telling you, I wanted so bad to get up in that funeral service and I just wanted to get up there and tell him how much I love my daddy. But, and I couldn't ever remember telling him that. I knew that he knew that I loved him. I just had never said it to him. Men didn't do that back then, I don't guess. But anyway, I just wanted to get up in that service and say, I love my dad. He, he was a good dad, but I couldn't. But then, I, I, you know, after it sort of sunk in that dad's gone, 
I thought, buddy, you're on your own now. You ain't got nobody to run to. When you come up short, you're on your own. Amen. Well, I'm going to tell you, when Samson went out there and he faced the enemies of God, he was on his own. I'm, I'm not trying to make you feel bad. I'm trying to tell you the God's truth. If you're lost, you're on your own. Amen. But thank God forever, there's some help. Hallelujah. God is a very present help in the time of trouble. Give him praise and glory in the house of God. You don't have to be on your own. Amen. God is right here. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. We ain't going to lack. God's going to take care of us. Amen. And never forget, praise God, that the Bible says, and, and this is about King Asa. You know, Asa done a lot of good things and he got real successful. And when he got real successful, he, he quit depending on God and started depending on the flesh, the arm of flesh and others. And because of that, brother, he got in bad trouble. In, in 2 Chronicles 15 and verse 2, the Bible says, the prophet come to Asa and he said, Asa, I want to tell you, he said, the Lord is with you while you be with him. Listen, Samson is the one that divorced God. God didn't divorce Samson. He told his, uh, his secret to a betraying, deceiving woman that he loved. Amen. And that's the truth. Uh, you say, that's hard. No, that's just cold hard facts. And, when, and, and she destroyed that man. She shaved his covenant away with God. And the Bible says that the man of God said to Asa, he said, the Lord is with you while you be with him. Amen. And if you seek him, and if you're lost, that's why you're in church today, you're, you're looking for something you ain't got, and it's God. And that's it. He can, he's the only one that can fill your void. It says, and if you seek him, he'll be found of you. But if you forsake him, uh, he'll forsake you. Right. Church, listen, God ain't going to stay where he ain't wanted. Let me say that again. God doesn't stay where he is not wanted. He said, if you forsake God, then God's going to forsake you. That's why Samson stood up there and shook himself, and there wasn't nothing shaking but Samson. That's just the truth. My God, amen, can we not see here that the, the, the unfaithfulness to a divine gift resulted in its withdrawal? I want to tell you that again. Listen, God, if you're a preacher, a teacher, a minister of music, uh, wh uh, whatever you are, that's a gift of God. Whatever your capacity is in the body of Christ, it's a divine gift. But your unfaithfulness of that divine gift results in its withdrawal. Withdrawal. That's just the truth. It's taught throughout the Bible. In Matthew 13 and 12, Jesus said, For whosoever hath, Amen. To him shall be given, and he shall mo have more abundance. Amen. That means, buddy, if you'll take care of what God's give you, it's just going to explode. Amen. And the Bible says, but whosoever hath not from him shall, uh, shall be uh, taken away even that which he has. Ain't that what the Lord's saying? Whatever the giftedness is that is in your heart, if you don't take care of it and, faith and ain't faithful to it, then God takes it away. He'll take it away. Listen, he did it to Saul, didn't he? Saul disobeyed God. Amen. And the Bible says that Samuel anointed David as king over Israel. And God told Saul through the mouth of the prophet Samuel, he said, I've given the kingdom to your neighbor that is better than you. Amen. Brother, there's no guarantees if you ain't faithful to God. Sadly, Samson had the opportunity and he squandered it all away on wild women. My God, ain't it time for us to wake up, amen. Uh, time is short, eternity is long, uh, and judgment is certain. That's a fact, amen. And these three things that I just mentioned, time, eternity, and judgment, amen, we're all going to have to deal with them. Uh, in 2 Peter 1 and verse 10, the Bible says, Wherefore the rather, brethren, give diligence to make your calling and election sure. For if these things be in you, you shall never fall. Well, he's going to tell us if we don't have these things, we're subject to fall. Samson didn't have these qualities that Peter's talking about. If he had, he wouldn't have failed. The voice translation says in 2 Peter 1 and uh, verse 10, Therefore, brothers and sisters, work that much harder to confirm that God has called you and claimed you. And if you do this, then you will never fall along the way. Now, this doesn't make me special. I just want to tell you something. 
I've been saved way over 40 years. If I make it to the ninth day of September, I'm going to be your pastor for 39 years. But I've seen a lot of people fall by the way. Amen. That's just the truth. I wish they didn't. And the truth is, God didn't want them to. But brother, there is Delilah sprinkled all along the way. And it doesn't have to be in the form of a woman. It, it, it can be in drugs or alcohol or pornography. Amen. It can be in the cares of this life, the deceitfulness of riches or the lust of ever other things. And then there's another one that gets a lot of people. You, you know, I was a teenager. I know y'all don't think I was ever that young, but I was. Amen. I remember when, it, when I went to church just to flirt with girls. And some of you guys come to church just to get on your phone, tell jokes, and laugh. But I'm going to tell you something. You die and go to hell, and it's going to be no joke. You better wake up and get serious about church because we're in a solemn assembly today and the presence of the God of the universe is here. And that's the truth. Who are you talking about? If the shoe fits Cinderella, you're going to have to wear it. That's just the way it is. Amen. God is God and to Him be the glory. And that's what causes people to fall along the way. What things is Peter talking about? When Peter says, if these things be in you, then you'll never fall. Man, a smart person's going to think, what can I do to keep me from falling? Right? I want to know what those things are. I want to know what things are that can guarantee me has been a success and make it to heaven. So what, what is Peter talking about that will ensure us that we won't fall? Amen. God help us a little bit here. In verses 3 through 7 it says, According in his, as His divine nature has given us unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him that has called us to glory and virtue. Did you hear that? Amen. The Bible just said in 2 Peter 1 and verse 3 that God's given us everything we need. God's given us everything we need, church. I mean, my God, we got the Bible. We got the Father, the Son, the Holy Ghost. We got the Spirit of God that guides us into all truth. Amen. The Spirit of God is telling us what they're talking about up there so He can reveal it to us down here so we can fight a better warfare against the enemies of God and all that is good. And then the Bible says, Whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises that, that by these you might be partakers of the divine nature having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. And then he tells us what things we need to have in our life. It says in verse 5, and, by, and besides this, giving all diligence, add, everybody say add. add. Yeah, add. To your faith, virtue. So you need more than faith, right? Add to your uh, faith, virtue. Virtue means divine energy. And to virtue, knowledge. And to knowledge, temperance. Amen. To temperance, patience. And to patience, godliness. And to godliness, brotherly kindness. And to brotherly kindness, charity, which means love. Now listen to this. In verse 89, he said, if these things be in you. So what things is he talking about? He's talking about faith, virtue, knowledge, temperance, patience, godliness, brotherly uh, kindness, and love. If these things be in you and abound, they're supposed to get stronger as you get, as you get more mature in Christ. If they be in you and abound, they make you that you shall neither be barren. Amen. That means you can produce nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise God forever. What if you don't have these things in your life? What's going to be the end? Amen. Well, I'm going to tell you, you'll end up just like Samson. Because the Bible says in 2 Peter 1 and verse 9, But he that lacketh these things, what things? Faith, virtue, knowledge, temperance, patience, godliness, brotherly kindness, and love. If you lack these things, the Bible says that this guy is blind. Now, I don't think there's a blind person in this building today, but I want to tell you, I guarantee you, there's some blind people in this building. There's some blind people in this building. I'm going to tell this story for about the umpteenth time. Jordan's sitting back there. Um, went and, uh, he ha he's got CDLs. He has to take a physical every two years. He went to take a physical. You know, they take, check your blood pressure and all kinds of goofy stuff, make you touch your toes. and I mean, a hard thing sometimes. But anyway, then they give you a hearing test, and then they give you an eye test. And when they give Jordan his eye test, he read the whole chart. I mean, the... Ever blessed line on the chart. And that 
nurse that was giving him the eye test said, wait here just a minute, Mr. Bellamy. She went and, got, she went and left the room, come back in there with another eye chart. She thought he'd memorized the eye chart. He read every line on the second eye chart. She said, I want to tell you something. I've been a nurse for 20 years, and I ain't never had this happen. Amen. Read the, every line on it. See, Jordan's got good eyesight, but I'm telling you something. Jordan could be spiritually blind sitting in the church of God right today. Amen. And I'm going to tell you, I venture to say they people sitting in this building that is spiritual blind. And I'm going to tell you why I believe that. In 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 3 and 4, the Bible says, if our gospel be hid, do you realize that there's people that don't know the gospel? It's hid to them. If our gospel be hid, it's hid to them that are lost. In whom the God of this world, Satan, the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them that believe not. But if you don't believe in God, you're a spiritually blind person. Amen. That's the truth. And if you do believe in God, why ain't you done something about it? There was, listen, I was up here at church uh, Friday, and, and I looked out there, and I was looking at somebody that's over here weed eating. And I, I, I was on a mission. I was gone to put something in the basement. And I was, uh, I, after I looked to my right, I was on a beeline to that basement, and I got about five foot from them double doors, and over there on this left-hand corner, somebody said, how you doing, Gary? Man, I about jumped out of my flesh. <laughs> Amen. I didn't know there's anybody within 500 foot of me. I said, man, you have scared the living daylights out of me. And I walked over and talked to him, and Finally, I didn't know him from Adam. He knew me. I didn't know him. But finally, after talking to him, I figured out who he uh, was through who his dad was and his grandfather was and this, that, and the other. And he got up and got ready to leave. I, I said, why don't you come to church? I mean, man, if you show up on a church parking lot, the least the preacher ought to do is invite you to church, right? I said, why don't you come to church? You know what he said to me? He said, I, I need to. See, here's a man that knows what he needs. And I'm not judging him because God only knows the hearts of men and women. But here he said, I need to. So he's acknowledging that he's got a need. And he may be in church somewhere this Sunday. I hope he is. But the truth of the matter is he knowed he had a need. So evidently he wasn't living as well as he knew that he ought to be living. And you know what makes people do that? It's because they're blind. They think they got next Sunday or next year. Or they think they got a, a lot of time. But I'm going to tell you something. Church time's going to get us all. And you better believe that. There's a time to be born. And there's a time to die. Ecclesiastes chapter 3 and verse 1. So time is going to get us. And it gets the young. It gets the old. And it gets the, the middle age. But I'm going to tell you. If you've got your blood under the, uh, on the, the sins under the blood of the Lamb. It can't do nothing to us. Uh, for me to live is Christ and to die is gain. Amen. Amen. But the Bible says if you don't have faith and virtue and knowledge and temperance and patience uh, and godliness and brotherly kindness and love in your heart, you're blind and you cannot see afar off. See, that's what happens when Satan blinds your mind. You, you can't see the consequences of the decisions that you're making. That's just the truth. How many can't see their consequences? How many people is talked about and told about in the Bible that couldn't see the consequences of their decisions? Take, for instance, in John 4, the woman at the well that sat down beside the holiest man that ever walked the face of the earth. And he told her all things that she'd ever done. Man, God knows what we've done and loves us anyway. And he said, go call your husband. And she said, I have no husband. And Jesus said, thou's well said, thou hast no husband. You've had five. Well, I guarantee you, Jesus could have told them the five men, their, her, 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 their names, their street address, where they got married out, and the minister that performed the ceremony. And then he dropped a, a bomb on her, and he said, and the one you're with right now ain't yours. He belongs to somebody else. Amen. You know, she there ain't no doubt that gal couldn't see the consequences of her decision or she wouldn't have been acting like she did. But then Jesus got her lined out. That's what Jesus does to all of us. He gets us straightened out. And then we see the woman in John chapter 8 
She was taken in the very act of adultery. I can guarantee you that this unnamed woman that committed adultery, amen, listen, you have to, you have to be with a married person to, be, to commit adultery. Amen. There's a difference between fornication and adultery, but both of them send you to hell if you die unrepented of them. But this woman, if she'd have known she's going to get caught, she wouldn't have done what she did. But you know what Jesus done? Jesus forgive her. He did. Go thy way and sin no more. I'm going to give you a second chance. That's what you need to hear today. Then we see in Luke, cha in Luke chapter 12, the rich farmer, a man that thought he had a lot of years for, uh, to eat, drink, and be merry. He said, Thou hast much goods laid up for many years. Take thine ease, eat, drink, and be merry. But what he didn't understand is he didn't have the years to enjoy. God said, Thou fool, this night thy soul shall be required of thee. Then we find in Luke 14, we preached it just the other day, last weekend I think, the people that declined the invitation to come to God's supper, God said, none of these shall be at my supper. In Luke 15, we read about the prodigal son. Man, he lived it fast and hard and wasted his living on party and harlots. Uh, amen. And he hit rock bottom. In Mark chapter 10, we read about the rich young ruler. He had it all. He was rich, he was young, and he was powerful. But he was empty on the inside. Lord, uh, what must I do that I may inherit eternal life? Amen. And when Jesus told him, he went away sorrowful. Amen. Just like many today. There's so many people that walks in church and they leave church sad when they could leave church happy if they'd only listen to God. In Luke 16, uh, we see, amen, the rich man uh, that lifts his up his eyes, looking into paradise, uh, being in torment in God's hell. Amen. Because he rejected the Lord. My God. Amen. It's time and it's high time uh, that the most Multitudes, uh, amen, take another look at the consequences of the decisions that they're making. And the Bible said that he that lacketh these things, uh, 2 Peter 1 and verse 9, uh, is blind and cannot see afar off and hath forgotten that he was purged from his old sins. And then I thank God forever we're promised if we do these things in verse 10, you'll never fail, you'll never fall. You're going to succeed. 1 Corinthians 10 and 12 says, Wherefore, let him that thinketh he standeth take heed lest he fall. Ain't nobody above falling, but I'm telling you when you do what God says, and God says you ain't going to fall, you won't fall. Amen? Samson, like many, had a fatal fascination of sin. It's just the truth. Study the three chapters that gives this judge, judge's history of his life. He had a fatal attraction Amen. To sin. He really did. The Bible says in Judges, or Numbers 32 and 23, be sure your sin will find you out. Amen. That's just the truth. Listen, you only can play Russian roulette so many times. It's going to hit the chamber. You keep spilling that cylinder. It's going to hit the wrong spot one of these days. Same way with sin. Samson was a man of great physical strength. He was. It's untelling how, I mean, my God, he took the gates of the city of Gaza and run up to the top of the mountain with them. That's amazing to me. Ain't that amazing? He took a jawbone of a donkey and killed a thousand men. I mean, that, I, I, mean I would have been an a, a AK-47 or something. It took, you know, for us to do that with. Samson done it with a donkey's jaw. Amen. Which is not a weapon. But he done it because the power of God was on his life. Samson was a man of great physical strength. He had a keen mind. He was smart. Listen, well, you said, how did Delilah do? And son, he loved that gal. The Bible said that. I'm going to tell you right now, people that you love can get more out of you than anybody. Right? Come on, church. That's just the truth. They can hurt you more than anybody because you expect more out of them. And the Bible says, the Bible teaches that Samson was not only physically strong, but he had a keen mind. But here's the deal, church. He was morally weak. He was morally weak, and he was spiritually unfaithful. And because of this, the Bible says that the Lord departed from him. Judges 16 and verse 20. It seems that Samson's eyes were his first offenders. Because if you read Judges 14 and 1, it says, And Samson went down to Timnah 
And he saw a woman. He saw a woman. Didn't say he saw a blazing white stallion and a, and a wonderful golden chariot. <clears throat> he saw a woman. And then the Bible says in Judges 16 and 1, then Samson, after a failed marriage, he went to Gaza and he saw there a harlot. <clears throat> And in verse 4 of the same chapter, it says it came to pass that afterward, after the harlot, that he loved a woman in the valley of Zorik, whose name was Delilah. And then, after the deception of Delilah, the betrayal of this woman that he loved, the Bible says in verse 21, and the Philistines took him and put out his eyes. That's why that I think that Samson's eyes was... His problem, man, he's always looking in the wrong place. You see, you need to know where to look, and the where to look is to God. Amen. Not to women, not to fast cars, not to all of this other stuff that, that, that you're thinking you got to have, which if the Bible tells us if you'll seek God, you're going to get them anyway. Yeah. you got to go about it the right way. And the Bible says, And the Philistines took him, and put out of, out of his eyes and brought him down. Sin will bring you down to Gaza. And the Bible said that they bound him. Sin will bind you with fetters of brass. And he did grind in the prison house. Once again, let me say, his eyes was his first offenders, which betrayed him to lust. And now they are the first things that gets put out. Jesus said in Matthew 5 and verse 29, He said, If thy right eye offend thee, pluck it out and cast it from thee. For it is profitable for thee that one of thy members should perish and not that thy whole body should be cast into hell. He's saying if you don't get rid of stuff, it's going to take you to the wrong place. It is better for Samson to be blind in the Philistine prison than to abuse his eyes in Sorek. I'd say he was more blind by the lust for Delilah than he is now when he sees not. He was a greater slave to her, amen, when he, when he showed his lustful desires than now while he's grinding in the enemy's prison. Two things that I'm going to say, and I'm done, church. Amen. And I know this ain't been the most exciting message, but it ought to sober a bunch of people up. You can't play church and go to heaven. Amen. You, you cannot trifle with the gift of God and keep it. Amen. That's just what the Bible teaches. Amen. It's just the truth about it. And, and, and if you get mad at me, get over yourself. It's, I, I'm just a little old messenger boy. I'm telling you right now, you've got to protect what God gives you. And if you don't protect what God gives you, He's going to give it to somebody else. And then you can get mad at the preacher. And you're going to say, the preacher, I can't take nothing from a fly. Right. Amen. <clears throat> I can't take what I can't give. Amen. Amen. And I can't give you a gift, but God does. And God says, when you get it, you better take care of it. Well, let me tell you these two last things in Judges 16 and 22. Samson's over there bound with fetters. He's a... Uh, He's grinding at the mill like a beast of burden. <clears throat> and the Bible says, How be it the hair of his head begin to grow again. I want everybody to say again. again. You may be a mess this morning. You may, may have made poor choices and wrong decisions. Amen. And just goofed up everything that God set up. I can't get that out of my mind. You've messed up what God had set up for you. Amen. But I want to tell you something. God can cause things to happen again. The Bible said that Samson's hair began to grow again after he was shaven. Amen. That little boy, little young boy, he ain't in church today. Sure he ain't, is he? See here? Ain't. He messaged them boys. He said, I'm, I'm going to do something tomorrow. He's got the awfulest head full of black hair ever was. And I come up here church Friday, and them boys had been out there lifting weights. And Shuey pulled off his cap, and he had that head shaved. I said, boy, that's a sight. That's a sight. A boy can grow a pretty head full of hair, and he shaves it, and I can't grow, a, I can't grow it. 
Now, why, why wouldn't God give me that hair? Hey, Chewy, don't want it. I'd take it, man. I'd take every last hair follicle that's on his head. But listen, Samson lost what he had. Samson lost what he had, but the Bible said that his hair began to grow after he was shaven. Verse 28. And they lead him out there in Dagon's temple and they got this great uh, coliseum full of pagans and unbelievers and they're making sport of Samson. And you ought to study that word sport because it really means they made him dance. Amen. Like that old worldly song that come out about 30 or 40 years ago, Mr. Bojangles, the nitty gritty dirt band, uh, dance, you know. They had old Samson. Instead of Samson, amen, killing and destroying them, they was making sports of him and making him dance. It's like watching gun smoking, amen, some drunk shooting under somebody's feet with a pistol. He's dancing all over the building. And then he finds a lad and he says, take me to the pillars of the temple, amen. And the Bible said that when Samson got in between the pillars, pillars of the temple, verse 28, and Samson called unto the Lord and said, remember me. As they come and get us a song for you today, I want to tell you something. I think when Samson prayed to God and he said, God, remember me, I believe he was saying, God, I am no longer what I was. I'm no longer strong, God, but now sin has made me weak. He said, God, I can't see, and I don't have any dignity, amen. And I'm a prisoner of the enemies of God, the Philistines. I think he might have said when he said, God, remember me, I am poor, I'm a destitute fool who gave up my secret. I have failed you, Lord, and I'm a fallen man. But God, would you just this once remember me and give me back the old Samson. How many sits in church because of poor choices, wrong decisions, because you looked and wanted something so much that you deluded, deleted, and watered down what is clearly taught in the Bible. And now... You're not God's strong person, but you're weak. And you're praying in your heart of hearts this morning, God, just give me back the old Samson, I pray thee, and strengthen me.